call to order this May 10th uh, budget hearing. Please join us in the pledges. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we see the flag of the state of New Mexico, the city symbol of perfect friendship among the United Cultures. Thank you. So we're here for the budget hearing. Manager Webb, would you like to start? Um, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, so we have uh, various department heads here, and we will go in order of what's on the agenda, um, starting with the uh, maintenance department. Jason, if you want to just give us a, we would like to keep this brief today, so just go over the brief highlights of what you're looking for. Before you start, um, I don't know what's the pleasure of the commission, but um, a couple of us would like to keep this to about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, if that's possible. So peace. <laughs> so go ahead. Thank you. That's good. good morning, everyone. So basically, in the maintenance department, we're um, looking at a flat budget. Um, we had a few increases to equipment maintenance and uh, county facilities repairs, along with um, supplies and materials. So um, I'd entertain any questions if you all have any. Any questions? Okay. Wow. Thank you. It was easy. Thank yeah. You. Keep, keep it short and sweet. in ours as far as this may be some maintenance contracts. Um, is that better? Yeah, that's better. Okay. Um, the only thing that we were asking for is we had a position that was frozen in our last budget um, due to, um, you know, there wasn't enough, enough funding to get that position uh, reopened. Um, my request for this was to reopen that position um, after speaking um, with Linda and going over our budget again. Um, she was very helpful, and I just want to say thank you, Linda. Um, I understand that um, that's not going to be possible at this time. Um, I would like that to be revisited um, in June, you know, when there's a little bit maybe more answers to exactly, you know, where the budget's going to be. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it on our end. So if there's any questions. Um, what the fresh what position is and the, the cost? The position that we have um, that's been frozen, it's for our recording department. Um, last year we were actually right in the process of hiring. We had actually, um, we had um, done the interviews. Um, but at that point we had gone to Santa Fe and we Everybody kind of knew that the budget was, it, I, the whole state was kind of in a, you know, it was going to be pretty hard. So we um, went ahead and just stopped the process and didn't hire because we wanted to help any way that we could to alleviate what we could. This year, um, I'm the position, I'm sorry, I think it. Oh, 30,000. Yes. It's, it's, it's the difference between the requested and the recommended. Not Once you add the interest and everything, right? Yeah. And, and actually, Linda was very helpful. Um, you know, she made so a lot of sense of the, you're looking at that salary, but then uh, when you're looking at the salary, you're not looking at what the insurance does to that, what the PRE does to that. Um, so we now will also, um, you know, just recently we had House Bill 98 passed. So that's the election bill. So we will now be um, doing all the elections. So our duties have just increased a little bit more because now we will be handling the municipalities um, if they opt in, but we will be doing every other election, including school boards. Um, instead of every two every uh, two year cycle, we'll be doing it every single year. So our our stuff is definitely increasing in our office. Again, uh, Linda was very good, explained, and um, you know my request is that we maybe possibly revisit that. You know when it's when it's more when the budget is more solid and we know what, what's going to be there. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, um, so I would like to reiterate that, and I should have said that from the beginning. Um, 
we did try to remove in the preliminary budget um, most of um, any personnel requests raises um, capital that didn't have a distinct purpose um, and um, we will revisit that in the final budget when we know what our beginning cash balance actually is and how our revenues came in. So we will be revisiting all personnel and all capital um, requests in the final budget. The number that I calculated is, is 60,000. The total difference of requested to recommend it to 66, but there are some items there that aren't related to a, a new person. Right, it's roughly 60 yeah. grand. 60 grand is what I get. Mm. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Kubiaka. Yeah, every time you hire somebody, just double the salary. At the county. Okay. Yeah. You might have to have a band with you, do you? I just thought your name was Matt. Yeah. I don't know if you got it. Does the general brother actually receive my PowerPoint presentation? Yes, I know. Thank you. Harry did, and Alicia, thank you for the return call. I appreciate that. So it's going to take a couple minutes uh, to get this thing up and running, and see if uh, Ben will will uh, get us online in the back room. Yes. Is there power to the monitors right now? Um, so we'll have to check with Ben back there. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you, Ben. Chairman, board members, mayor. Yes, thanks. Thank you very much. I would like to start off with the uh, current staff as the uh, Raul Torrieta is the assessor. The uh, chief deputy is uh, Matthew James, and uh, I really appreciate all the work that he's done. My chief deputy, uh, uh, chief appraiser is Mr. Trujillo. She's an amazing individual that has been in the assessor's office for the past 12 years. Tax examiner, ma uh, mapper, Tracy Bernstein. Once again, uh, the mapping department was actually pulled out of the assessor's office when I stepped in three and a half years ago. Uh, we had to revamp the appraisers uh, due to the fact that uh, I only had a couple of individuals at that time. So appraiser, we had Ron Gary, uh, Gabe Grado, uh, Desiree Liska. We also have Denisha Lucero, who came from the manager's office and has uh, I would like to make a statement that they actually passed their first course of uh, course one from the IWE all, Gabe, uh, Gabe uh, Grado and also Denise Lucero, so I gotta give them a great big hand on that one. We got Lorraine Zunich and uh, a temporary, it's uh, Audra Hernandez and, and she has, she's amazing, she's done a great job. What we do in the assessor's office, we discover this value. We over have 26,419 real property accounts. We have 10,416 residential improvements. We have 1,950 non-residential improvements. Manufactured homes, we have 3,589. Business personal property, 810. Livestock, 537. And central assessment, 534. We serve over 28,609 residents, covering over 3,968 square miles. Uh, we do have uh, the appraisal with building permits. For the numbers of tasks, uh, we have over 217 field visits for the year 2017, manufactured homes of 210, tax releases 170, new installs, and that's a review in personal property, is over 40. We also have the real properties of uh, 12. And agriculture, we have done 34 visits, and that is a very time-consuming job when it comes down to the ag. We do have a lot of issues. I pretty much have explained it to our Commissioner Brown. Um, 
and uh, he understands the fact of what's going on here in Grand County. On the rendition, we have livestock over 480 accounts, 480, and we have over 1,300 occurs of 28,594 animals. Building permits, we have a small increase on that. Uh, we have 640 manufactured homes, added of 78 accounts. On the appraisal of the task, we have our protests. As a matter of fact, we're in full-blown protest right now for the year 2018. We had 162, year, uh, 162 last year. They all got resolved. Residential sales, we had over 858 transfers classified as sales, 466 affidavit received, typically 45 to 55% transaction classified as sales and not corroborated by sales, affidavits, and investigation. 148 sales reviewed complete of 200 uh, in the year 2012. 326 sales reviewed complete for 4118, 140 remain. We have zero for 2018 complete due to the fact that we have a five month backlog because we actually lost our frozen that one appraiser, so it has really uh, created some, some issue. Um, however, the residential sales appraiser's position was frozen in 2018. Okay, and uh, also in 2015, the uh, Grand County Assessor's Office. Um, implemented a rigid sales uh, comparisons uh, process. However, like I said, that's one of the positions, and if I may, we really uh, would like to have that position back. It is frozen at this time, and it would be nice if we could get it back. It would really help out not only in the revenue stream, but also in the assessor's office. The uh, 2017 number task, uh, we have exemptions of 260 veterans, 66 full disabled, 22 low income, 40 head household, 132. Um, the north evaluation, we mailed out 27,918 uh, NOVs. The title examiner and parcel mapping is 2,306 of property transfers, 733, 733 additional accounts modified, and uh, we have 44 splits, 84 parcel combined. Uh, we would just like um, to probably talk uh, down the road about uh, the large parcel correction project, which we'll need to speak a little bit more later. In uh, the reappraisal, okay, in 2018, 2017, we have a task that we're hampered and we have an inadequate staff at this moment. We do need bodies in the assessor's office and we conduct our reappraisals. The obstacle statistical, we have 3,363 historical models that have not yet been converted for uh, Marshall and Swift. A current conversation rate completed would be in the year 27, 2027. Neighborhoods have not been defined, statistical models have not been developed, and land values due to new data, outdated data, and, uh, and at this moment uh, we are actually sitting with the legislative um, council, not only with the assessor's affiliate, where we're trying to pass a bill with the uh, residential and non-residential so we can have full disclosure here in the state of New Mexico. However, we are actually going to pull out agricultural on that, so that is in the making. I would like to also um, talk about the 2017, uh, the assessed value of 350.7 million in 2017. In 2018, uh, the net assess is uh, from 4 18 18, 666 million point six, and that's an increase of 2.4 percent. On the net value, we're looking at 5.72 mills, and the residential cap. And that's only residential cap, and that's uh, improved properties. We're looking at a 3% at 8.16 mil. Overall, the negative impact of the significant reduction of livestock related, and we actually have spoke about that in the past, we're looking at a negative of 25%, and we're losing over 5.16 million in valuation. Livestock value was impacted in the sharp reduction in livestock, and uh, once again, that had to do with the price of cattle, and uh, it was done through to uh, property tax division. I would like to hand over this other portion of my presentation for uh, staffing the comparisons because we actually went around the state to see exactly where we're at on the comparisons with appraisers and uh, mapping. Go right ahead, Matthew. Chairman, commissioners, thank you. As you know, staffing is one of the most significant costs we face. Our goal in the assessor's office is to staff our office in a way that we can meet the community's needs and expectations and we can also meet our statutory and regulatory requirements. Our current staffing levels allow us to keep our head above water. Um, however, as Mr. Turrieta has outlined for us very quickly this morning, there are areas where we're not meeting um, the expectations of the state. We're keeping our head above water, but we can do better, and we should do better, and if we do, it strengthens the county. 
So we took a look at the other counties, specifically the other Class B over counties here in New Mexico. In 2016, 18 counties were Class B over counties, which includes Grant County. The data you see before you is 2016 data. It's aggregated. It was aggregated actually by Otero County, thanks to, um, was it Steve's last name? Steve Boyle. Steve Boyle of Otero County. He aggregates this data from the reports that are sent to the state. So again, this is 2016 data. One exception to that is we have added current data for Grant County staffing. And so what we want to do here is kind of compare ourselves to our peers. You can see we've pulled out a number of measures that compare our county to these other counties. And we'll, we've ranked where we fell in compared to the other 18 counties. And also gave you medians and averages to see, you know, again, where we compare. So um, the, the categories we're looking at, we're looking at total value, we're looking at population, we're looking at land area and square miles real property accounts, manufactured home accounts, personal property, state assessed, and total accounts. So you can see um, Grant County, if you look at total value, this includes copper for 2016, we ranked 11th at about $823 million. Um, you compare that to average, that's about 63% of average for a Class B county. Admittedly, that average is a bit skewed by some of our other counties who have large gas and oil holdings. So the median is probably more informative there, where the median was $850 million, where we're about 97% of that. You look at population, we're ranked 10th. We had about 26,000 people in Grant County. That's 71% of average, 86% of the median. You look at the size of the county, we rank 11th. About 4,000 square miles, and that's pretty consistent with both the average and the median. You look at real property accounts, we rank 12th. We've got over 27,000 real property accounts. And again, that's 78% of average, 85% of median. Manufactured home accounts, we rank 11th. About 3,600 accounts, that's 92% of average, 95% of median. Personal property accounts, about 1,100 accounts, 75% of average, 76% of median. If you're looking at the rankings so far, you see we're falling in right around 10 or 11. State assessed, this one's a little bit of an outlier. We rank number six with number of counts. That's 93% of average and 105% of the median. And when you look at total accounts, again, we rank 12, um, 31,000 accounts, 80% of average, 80% of median. Again, you can see the running average and rank is like 10, 11, or 12 right in that area. Averages, we run you know, somewhere between 75% and 95% of averages or medians. So then we go to staffing, where we rank 15th. So notable drop there, 11th and 12th in most categories, but 15th in staffing. That's 64% of average, 70% of median. So if we take all those rankings we had for each of those categories and we average those rankings, that ranks us about 10 and a half out of 18 Class B over counties. Now, that's just a straight average. I mean, these categories are very disparate. How do you weight them relative to each other? I didn't even try to come up with an algorithm for that, so I just did a straight average. Now, if you average all those average values, you know, average um, total value, average population, all that stuff, that, the average of the averages is about 82%. If you take the median of all those medians I specified, we're about 91%. So let's take those 82% numbers and that 91% number of average and median and compare that to the staffing. So we say, hey, overall we could say we're 82% of a Class B county. That would be a staff of 10.2, but we have a staff of 8. And we say median, hey, we're 91% of a median class B over county. That would be staffing at 10.3, but we have a staffing of eight. Now when I say staffing, important note here, we're talking regular, permanent, full-time, temporary employees are not reported to the state, so I don't have comparison data for that. So you can see, compared to our peers, we're a little bit under average. And you know, even, you know, even, even taking into our, you know, all these different categories, we're not staffed comparably to our peers. So 
so it also did some literature review. Um, the International Assess Association of Assessing Officers does quite a bit of data work on our field. They did a very large survey in 1986. They reported on that in 1990, and they repeated that study in 2013. And information that comes out of that, those two studies. In 1990, their document reads, one full-time employee for each 2,500 parcels is typical, although this proportion varies greatly among jurisdictions. In smaller jurisdictions, the workload averages 1,500 to 1,700 parcels per employee. In larger jurisdictions, about 3,000 to 3,500. Workloads vary on the quality of staff. We're going to talk a little bit more about that in a couple of slides, and the complexity of properties, and so on. The actual mean value for that survey data was actually 24, 20 parcels per employee. And there is a very strict, supportable, statistical correlation between number of parcels and staffing. So this isn't just some arbitrary measure. So again, they read the survey in 2013, and they say, compared to those in 86, the staffing levels in 2013 are somewhat lower, while the workload per employee has increased. Overall, the average parcel count per employee has increased by 29% from 2420 in 1986 to 3123 in 2013. However, they note, parcel count per employee is 25% lower in agencies that are responsible for personal property assessment. That would include every county in New Mexico. So if you take that 3123, multiply it by 70%, you end up with 2342 parcels per employee. So let's take that data and apply it to Grant County. So currently, Grant County has 26,419 parcels or real property accounts. If you take the 86 value of 2,420 parcels per employee, that says we should have 10.9 employees. If you look at the smaller jurisdictions, of num uh, smaller jurisdictions number is 1,600 per employee, that would be 16 and a half employees. If you look at the 2013 data corrected for the fact that we do personal property, that the average is 2342 parcels would give us 11.3 employees. Those numbers do not include the assessment itself. A lot of the jurisdictions they, they compare to nationally do not have an elected assessor. Some of them have boards that govern their um, appraisal staff. So in that case, this would be, you know, looking at these numbers reasonably, 11 employees excluding the assessor. Our current staff includes four full-time appraisers, 1.6 temporary appraisers, one's full-time, one's part-time, and one title examiner and mapper. And in that, I'm excluding myself, the assessor, and the chief appraiser. So you can see by national data that has been collected by our professional organization, again, we come staffed underneath what is typical and expected. Two slides back, I talked about quality of staff. And so going to the International Association of Assessing Officers guidance on what does an entry-level appraiser look like? They say an entry-level appraiser should have a bachelor's degree or a combination of college education and experience that is equivalent there too. They say that they should have experience in real estate, building construction, GIS mapping, or, map, or mass appraisal. They suggest their skills and knowledge should include algebra, mathematical ability, computer literacy, and good oral and written communication skills. Now we all know, anyone who's been involved in the HR process here, Grant County has a small talent pool. And we also know that of the wages we offer are fairly low. Um, at Generally speaking, we're offering about $13 an hour for an entry-level appraiser. We're not going to attract a person with a bachelor's degree. They can do better elsewhere. So when we go to hire, we typically get people with a high school education and no experience in the field. We are proactively training our staff to get them up to speed in the skills that are necessary for what we do, but that does have an impact on how we administrate the number of people we have and what they can do for the county. 
sir. Back to you. Thank you. And uh, do you fall under the umbrella of the IWO standards um, and uh, also with the bylaws? On the staffing plan for the year 2019, we convert one temporary position for a permanent or uh, part-time temporary employee, not to increase the headcount, but additionally cost is occurred. Fill out the uh, open residential sale appraiser position, and that's the one that is actually frozen, and it will be considered a full-time position. Staffing a position that was frozen in 2018. This hire indirectly supports the parcel mapping correction project. Hire another full-time temporary employee targeted start 1 on 19, and it would be the temp salaries are paid by the reappraisal budget. Proactive training of the regiment for the employees to improve proficiency and efficiency. Cooperation of the New Mexico War for Workforce Collection to identify qualified applicants while others receiving federal funds and eligible to successful candidates. For the staff planning for a long term, we're looking at increasing staff and uh, faculty meeting statutory regulations requirement. Increasing staff addresses the shortfall. Residential sales review backlog, resident sales verification of transfers without affidavits, update land studies, vacant land, and uh, sales data. Develop commercial appraisal expertise, develop supporting commercial appraisal techniques, con uh, con uh, converting from historical models, defining neighborhoods, defining statistical models and reappraisals, and implementing for formal statistical analysis for tiny wide reappraisals. Uh, in the past, we gave a presentation about the parcel map correction for the year 2019, the internal, the Grand County Assessor's Office, Planning Department, properly preparing subdivision data and contractor. The RFP was bidding process, hiring a full-time appraiser, allowing the tax examiner mapper offload some of her stand duties and uh, current appraisals, and shall have the time to administ administrate the parcel mapping correction project. Doing this requiring training, individuals will to assume the title examined with mapping responsibilities. We contract the contract com complete. Work outlined with contract includes the following of 94000 for mapping and 26000 for the parcel, parcel fabric. As you know, the county evaluation proposal uh, mapping process issues, okay, meets the 21st century requirement in such data. The proposal of the, da of the table of the two-year project were leaves heavily outside of contracting. One of four preliminary quotes received first phase in the project most through apparently re reasonable at $120,000. Though the quotes range from 106 to 370,000. The, or the organization quoting of 120 will be able to meet preferred timelines putting the $120,000 cost contracted for the physical year of 100, uh, for the year 2019. Note there's additional contracting costs after the year 2020, um, but uh, also with the second phase has not been quoted. A uh, fatigue, a, a, no, a, a failure to staff the Grand County Assessor's Office is the manner to outline the budget proposal seriously undermines the office ability to meet our routine statutory and regulatory requirement and particularly guarantees the parcel managing problem will over budget and longer to be anticipated. Uh, we also put in our budget that House Bill 69 for the year 2018, and we actually put it in our budget, increasing the limitation of elected official salaries and effective by elected next term officials begins of the limited of 15 percent. The county commissioners at 30,196, sheriff 78,952, treasurer 75,733, clerk 75,733, assessor 75,733, and the probate judge of 26,482. We actually uh, came up with our budget of 401. And, uh, and as I can see for the capital outlay, and thank you very much for actually transferring the money over to the capital outlay parcel mapping of 120000 to conduct the parcel um, correction. Uh, that would actually help out on one for the House Bill 69, increasing the uh, number two, increasing the support, parcel mapping correction backlog, residential sales appraisals, and the task to relate general uh, reappraisals in the effort of House Bill 69. Countywide redistribution of the telephone bill was an adjustment, copier maintenance contracts, 
and also contracting the parcel map and correction, and that's number five. Increasing training costs associated to increasing the staff. And what has happened is we actually once again have, uh, have a couple of employees that actually passed their course one and very happy about that due to the fact that that's one of the hardest courses to pass here um, with the IWO. In the reappraisal 499, we note that 2018, there was a uh, 45,000 budget for the temporary employee was in, uh, adequately added to the budget twice, once in um, light item. And uh, Linda actually explained that on over to me, and I thank you so much, um, which is not only used to the portion of the full-time appraiser salary. And once the 503, as the outline of line item, Increase over time more flexibility for approaching for the deadlines, and we really need a vehicle purchase. Does have anybody have any questions at this time? Question. Question. Go ahead. Um, thank you for that presentation. Thanks for sending it beforehand. It's a lot easier to read it beforehand than to absorb what you're saying. I got to thank you for for the <coughs> conversation yesterday. Sure. I really appreciate that. Um, so let's see, I had uh, some small questions, maybe I'll start with those. Uh, I'm curious about the livestock valuation decrease. Uh, you said that's because of the, the decline in the price of cattle. Is there also a decline in the uh, head count? Uh, uh, go ahead, Matthew. Between 2016 and 2017, there was essentially no decrease in head count. Between 2000, during 2017, there was a small decrease, approximately 5%. But large so all the is price. It's right. It's rates. Literally, the, the rate on cattle, which is the most predominant livestock, literally dropped 25 percent, and that directly reflected it, reflected in the numbers. And it actually uh, pretty much affected the whole state of New Mexico. There, for sure. Okay. Can you explain the difference between an occurrence and uh, the number of accounts? You had 1,380 occurrences in your uh, rendition. I think I'm not familiar with that word. Yeah, it simply yeah, okay. means it's basically line items. Okay, so how many times, um, how many different line items of data are entered? So you would have, so there's like 1,300 different occurrences of different livestock. So one account could have cattle and sheep, and I don't know what else you can. Yes, sir. Horses, cattle, sheep, goats, llama, alpaca. All right. Well, that's helpful. Um, on your uh, compilation of data, Matthew, which I appreciate it greatly, it's, it's very helpful, I think, for us evaluating your request. Uh, the state assessed column, I wasn't sure about the relevance of that because our office doesn't have to staff anything related to state assessed property, correct? The, the impact of state assess is minimal. We do have data entry related to state assess, but we don't do the appraisal. Typically what happens is the state handles the assessment stuff. They hand the data down to us just before they're requiring us to certify values and we gotta get it all into the system. So it's not completely without um, effort on our part, but it is not a big player. Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Brown, uh, that value, and like I said, it is a very long time process. Uh, we've actually, I've had my chief appraiser, I've had my chief deputy actually answer the data. It actually has to be placed in by the 15th of June for our certification. But it is a long drawn process. We're actually trying to get with the uh, state assessed property where we can actually just drop it into our system and it can be possible down the road. So it does have a lot of and, Yeah, my, my question was more about the impact on your staffing than on the, on the process. So uh, I, I, in my head, discounted that column when I was looking at your comparisons. I understand. Yeah. Uh, okay, bigger question. Uh, we've budgeted a 3% increase budget over budget, not budget over reality, uh, in property taxes. Uh, and I think we heard you suggest that in residential it would be around 3%, but in non-residential it would be less. So that overall a 3% increase might be uh, overly optimistic. Is that, that is correct. your impression? That is correct. Do you, I don't know how this works. Do you get together uh, with Linda and Charlene to go over what a realistic figure is for the next year's budget? We do provide data to Linda when, um, during this process. Um, just a few weeks ago, we did provide her um, valuation data for the entire county by tax area. Um, and so they, they do receive that information from us. 
and Mr. Chairman, uh, Commissioner Brown, we actually are pretty much waiting to see what's going to happen with the state assessed properties. And not only that, um, matter of fact, I'm just waiting for a couple of emails from Copper Production so we can actually uh, give those numbers on over to Linda also. You'll have a sense of FY19 Copper Production values? That is values? correct. Okay. Yes, um, he'll provide him with uh, better data uh, in June, of course. Um, but for now, we have to use what's on um, the Property Tax Division website and what DFA refers to. That's not what I was going to add is DFA requires us to use um, the certificates that are provided on their website. Um, we do request data from the assessor's office so we can make that um, comparison. Um, one thing that would be helpful, and we requested this last year, never received it, and I'm going to request it again, is for you to complete the yield control okay. and get us a copy of the yield control, please, because that's helpful for us to understand um, if we are on track with what our um, projections are. Um, so that would be critically important if you could provide that this year, please. Yes, ma'am. Is, is there generally a large discrepancy between the certificates that they require us to use? No. Okay. Then I won't worry about it. Historically, no. And in my experience, no, there's not a huge discrepancy. Any further questions? Um, yeah, I guess uh, I had one. You've you've had, and maybe I don't know if somebody else was going to ask this already, but it's been requested a few times. I think I would have more allies in advocating for filling some of these positions uh, if you had uh, would provide an estimate of how much new value we could generate with such a person. I'm not asking you to respond now. I, I want this done carefully in, in writing, uh, but I know that that request has been made, and that would be uh, that would be I suspect maybe even more helpful than the research that Matthew did, even though. I thought that was well, actually, very valuable research. Actually, when we file our, our PTDs, ones, twos, and threes, that actually shows you the valuation, maintenance, and also the net new. But, but those but are real. That is the real numbers. And I'm talking about hypothetically, if we hired an additional person. Okay. Well, it would substantiate. I would just that's, like to make that statement. That's what's been requested. Instead of just a quali qualitative, surely it will go up an actual estimate of what okay. we're going to Okay. Um, and then the last is. Uh, you know, we had your whole presentation about uh, the, the parcel correction procedure. And uh, my understanding, I thought, Sean, I mean, you were quite supportive of doing that. I know I'm very supportive of getting that done. Uh, but your recommended budget doesn't include the money for that. Right. So um, we removed that, and we'll look at that again in the final budget, okay. um, depending on, I mean, he asked for, what, three new positions total? That is correct. Um, I can't afford all of that, so we just have to find that balance, and that's something that we looked at splitting between the journal fund and his, his reappraisal fund, but he's also spending more than he's bringing in in reappraisal, so we have to monitor that fund very closely. Um, I intend to try and make that work in this budget because I think it's critically important. I've expressed that before. My opinion hasn't changed. It needs to be done. Mm -hmm. However, we have to have adequate funding to do that, and how we choose to phase that in to be able to get that done um, I would rather do it sooner than later, but you know our budget is going to dictate how quickly we're able to do that and in what manner we're able to do that. So I will be looking at that in the final budget. We took it out for um, preliminary, so we could just. Um, I, I think Linda's done a good job of explaining. This is a very, very conservative budget, very conservative revenues, very conservative beginning cash balances. Um, I don't feel comfortable adding large projects like that in and then have to cut them later when we don't have the money. So I would rather address that at that point. Um, I think it's doable, but not doable plus three employees. So that's just something that Linda and I will have to um, to carefully analyze, and that's going to take some time. And my, my pitch, uh, what I would prefer to see, is uh, that it take place perhaps over a longer period of time utilizing actual staff rather than contractors. So. Uh, when you you know are figuring out how to make it happen, uh, that's what I would support. I believe that's the way we develop in-house skills that we will maintain in the county for a long period. And you know, to some degree, it also appeals to the buy local approach that you all have advocated a number of times on actual equipment. You're employing local rather than employing contractors who might leave later. So uh, when you examine those alternatives, my preference would be for adding staff. And if we can't afford enough to get it done fast, we had enough staff to do over a period of time the corrections that are needed, if that makes sense. And if it doesn't, tell me later why. 
Chairman, may I make one comment? Sure. Um, yeah. Obviously, in the assessor's office, we agree with the manager. This is a critical project, and it does need to be done. If we, you know, there's a debate as to whether we emphasize contracting or emphasize internal. Um, and that can be hammered out. We don't need to decide that here today. However, with the current proposal, which does involve a large amount of contracting, even though we do that, we need additional manpower inside so that we can administrate that project. If you approve the $120,000 for contracting, but don't approve additional manpower, we cannot support the project. There's one person in this building, and that's one person on our staff who's capable and has the skill set to administrate that project. That person already works 130% of what we would expect of her. There's no way we can say, oh, and administrate this too. If we get the money for the parcel mapping correction, we need to get money for additional bodies so that our title examiner and mapper can administrate that project and offload some of her responsibilities to this other additional person. Um, without additional manpower, it is not possible to do that project. So if we try it that way, either the parcel mapping project is going to suffer by going over budget or over schedule, or something else in the assessor's office will suffer, keeping up with transfers and deeds and things like that. So those two, those two numbers, the $120,000 of contracting and that one full-time position that's been frozen for a year now, are not independent. They have to come together. So yeah, we're really talking, you know, $180,000, dollars to make this happen in fiscal year 2019. If we funded the 120, the, the one example we're looking at with the contractor, mm -hmm. filled your frozen position, mm -hmm. and you, you've, you've mentioned a few times in your presentation about your statutory requirements. Mm -hmm. Can you guarantee that you can get this done with that position, additional position, getting the parcel mapping correction done with your current staff? Plus one? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, County Manager, it would be a stretch. However, it would we do, you know, we really do have qualified individuals, you know, when it comes down to the mapping corrections, and it is, honestly, it is doable. It could be possible of releasing that one sales uh, appraiser and uh, with a couple attempts, it, it could be, it could be possible. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Armadine. Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, um, well, uh, that was quite a presentation that was just set up there. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't have that detailed or that quality of uh, presentation. But uh, going into the budget, uh, we were given a letter saying that there's no money, we don't, we're not going to have any, we're not looking for any increases, we're not projecting anything, we don't know where we're at. Um, however, things that were in question, like the PILT, uh, have been funded. Uh, the 2018 PILT is $65 million above the 2017 PILT fund. Also, the rural, Secure Rural Schools program has also been funded, fully funded, by Congress and has been signed by the President. And I found myself with this budget, and if you look at my request, it's nothing. I had requested nothing. However, um, when I met with Linda the other day, I decided that uh, I, 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 had, I had requested prior to have a seasonal employee come in, and I was thinking of May, June, July, November, December, and January. 
Um, and I had I asked Linda at the time that we that we met that if I would like to add that request, and that person would cost a total of eighteen thousand ninety one dollars per fiscal year, and that's that's all the. I also requested a $5,000 non-capital equipment that was denied. Um, and, and the reasoning is, um, you know, the assessor has a 1% reappraisal fee. The clerk has a equipment uh, fee that they charge on everything that they file. They have the funds, they have the source for equipment. I have nothing. I need to replace my equipment in my office, my, our computers, to keep up. Um, we have the state taxation property uh, delinquent tax people in there right now. They've been there for almost a month now. Through the time, Angela has been trying to get some kind of equipment where they can access our system without getting on our computers that are assigned to to each employee. Um, she finally gave up. She says, I'm sorry, but the equipment that we have is not, is so out of date, we cannot do this. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm not asking for a lot, I don't think. And uh, anything, I mean, I, after I met with Linda, I was able to review this budget and, and the increases that are included in here for the many other, I'm not talking about the elected officials, but I'm talking about the other uh, subdivisions of the county. Um, there's quite a bit of a increase where, where we were told that there would be no increases. And, you know, I, you know I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I just feel like um, when I do, I do have some of the comparisons, uh, not as fancy as the assessor has, but um, when we look at Grant County treasures throughout the Grant County Treasurer's Office in comparison to the other county treasures throughout the state, for Class B and over, the average Class B and over has five point three employees versus four for Grant County. The average process, bills process is 26,000 compared to 29,000 for Grant County. The average collection rate is 94.3 compared to 92.6 for Grant County. The average salary for cap by, from, uh, according to the cap is 97% and 95 for Grant County. The average budget for other treasures is 4.3% of the budget. Grant County's at 2%. Now, you know, I, I have always, this is the eighth year now that I have requested and I've pared down my request to the bare bones for one part-time seasonal employee. And I would appreciate it if, you know, that would be considered. I mean, I, I know, like I say, going in, I hadn't requested that, and it's not reflected on this budget. But I would appreciate it if it would, if you would, could reconsider and set that for the for the June determination, whatever that's going to be for the for the, I guess, final budget. And like I say, I had mentioned the part-time seasonal employee prior to to this, but uh, you know, I was led to believe that there was no increases for nothing, and we so that's why I had done it this way. And so, is there any questions? Any questions? Huh? What was that number again for the part-time? Eighteen thousand ninety-one dollars. That's no. PERA, no insurance, right. nothing. It's strictly temporary, temporary FICA, Social Security. No. Other comments, questions? Okay. So I just, yes. Uh, 
Thank you for that clarification because when you and I had the conversation about the part-time seasonal employee, that's when you did not have a chief deputy and you indicated you didn't think you were going to be able to fill the chief deputy position. So that's a misunderstanding on my part. Um, and once you filled your chief deputy, I thought that was off the table. So that's, that's miscommunication on my part. Um, yes, we did strip a lot of capital requests. I don't see there being a problem putting your request back in in the final budget. However, we need to have a very bare bones budget to look at at this point. And I need you to remember this is simply preliminary. We didn't strip you. We didn't, we temporarily removed it. And I don't, I don't anticipate there being a problem allocating your $5,000 back to that, but, um, and yes, thank you for clarifying that yes, um, SRS was um, fully funded this year. Um, we have banked on that time and time again and learned how quickly that can be jerked away. And yes, PILTS is fully funded again this year. It doesn't always happen, but there are many other, if you've been to the gas pump lately, you understand, although our revenues are going up, our expenses are going up. So I just want to um, help you understand that I know you, you you look at the revenues and you see that they're coming in. And, you know, when we say there's no money, maybe, you know, yes, there is money, but we also have to look at the other expenses that are climbing right along with that. So just keep that in mind um, as we move through this. But currently, as of yesterday, we're at 83% collections for our taxes, and we've we've receded over $20 million in overall receipts for the county as of yes as of yesterday. It goes of, of business. So, and I, I do see the money coming in, the, the money we have in an investment account that what what that's generating, and so on. So, you know, I mean, I I. I uh, you know, that's all I have to say. Any questions, comments, Mr. Villanueva? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Um, on my budget that I was proposing, it was pretty, pretty flat. Um, uh, I did meet with Linda, and I appreciate the information that she passed on to me in, in uh, reviewing the budget. For where there's going to be minimal increases on certain line items that that we have no control over. Um, which was one of the full-time salaries of increasing it by 5000 on on certain things that go up, like longevity and stuff. Uh, the other one was the pre-employment benefit uh, line item. Um, we've, we've had a, a good turnover that we've uh, expended that money really quickly trying to recruit and hire uh, deputies. So that has depleted the budget. So she had a recommendation of increasing it, which I don't have a problem with that. The only request that I did have, that I do have, is uh, trying to get us some units. Um, I did request 65000 to try and purchase possibly two two units. Um, I know the legislature did uh, appropriate some funding that I did find out is like 60000 which really isn't going to benefit us that much. It will possibly help us get a unit fully equipped. So we are in desperate need of new cars, and, and uh, so that's the only request that I have other than that. I think everything else, um, I'm good with uh, leaving it as it was in the past and moving forward from there. Other than that, I don't have nothing else unless you have any questions. Questions for Sheriff? Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Earl Moore, could you cover items G and K for us? Mr. Yes, uh, yes, on the on the fleet maintenance, uh, I see they gave us on the preliminary a couple thousand dollars in the SO repair and the, and the road fleet maintenance, and I think we can live with that pretty easy. Okay, thanks. Questions on that? Fair enough. Okay. Um, with the current uh, situation in the Middle East, I think we're going to have to be real cognizant of of your fuel, and, and I'm going to bring up the uh, uh, sheriff's fuel today. Um, and I, I went right by that, but um, I know a little bit about fuel. And I have, I'm kind of, I don't have a crystal ball, but I, I could see, I could see that, that fuel budget for both you guys need to go up closer to 25%, just so you know, and, and never uh, a fuel item. Um, and maybe we have some contingency money someplace else that we've got 
for a week or four, and then uh, I don't know about it. You're looking ahead of the road, right? I'm looking ahead of the road. I think just on fleet maintenance so far. Oh, okay. Did, did you address? You, you haven't gotten the road yet, right? No. no. Okay. Is this the road address right now? Okay. I have no question. No, on, the, on the road budget, that, that, was, that was the only thing that I had to was uh, the fuel. Uh, we're going to have to keep a close eye on that. I know that's where uh, a lot of my budget got cut last year was on the fuel. And with the price rising up now, it's, I don't know, over three bucks a gallon now here. And even on the state contract, it's, it's rising up every time my son is kicking on there. Yeah, and I'm not talking about raising it today. I'm just going to need to yeah. look at it in the future. So I did. I also had at Mark to think about that on the sheriff's budget as well. Yeah. And as far as everything else in the road budget, it's pretty much flat. And uh, the only thing that I have, I've also got a, a position that's frozen. I've talked with Linda on that. And I'm not asking for it this time, but I would like to not forget about it whenever there is money available. Because I found out with, if you lose a, lose a person, it's hard to get somebody back. So, like I said, I'm not asking for that position right now or this year, but I'm kind of like Marissa, whenever funding's available, I'd like to have that position back. And it will be just a labor position. Thank you. For a labor position? Yes, ma'am. Questions for Mr. Moore? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Moore. Mr. Beard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, uh, members of the board. I really don't have anything I did. If you look, there's four line items in the whole budget. So um, I did make some adjustments just on equipment and maintenance uh, for the fact is the, the postage machine has a lease agreement that we need to pay in. I just wanted to make sure the money was in there. Uh, we have a two-year contract with uh, Pitney Post. And that's basically it, unless you have any questions for me. Four items. We're talking about general services, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I got confused because my list is longer than that. Five. With money. Five what? With money. In them. <laughs> oh, with money. In them. <laughs> <laughs> six. I count six. Okay. I understand that. Six. One. One. Okay. Eight, ten dollars. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I glanced at it. I, I met with Linda, and I, I do want to appreciate uh, Linda. Also working with uh, the finance director and the manager, making sure that I understand that everything is tight, and I just want to do my part to make sure that we stay within the budget. Well, and, uh, I, I'd like to, to clarify something that um, I didn't understand until a couple of days ago. Your few full-time salaries have, uh, you know, gone way down, and as I understand it now, uh, that's because job duties were transferred from that position uh, to the manager's office. That's correct. Uh, is that right? Yes. And, and that explains your help. Yes. That explains uh, the increase in the manager's office salaries. Correct. And it's worth pointing out, I think, uh, that it's gone down almost 38000 in general services, only went up less than 8000 in the manager's office. So it sounds like a bargain. Again, I'm just trying to do my part, Mr. Christian. Appreciate it, Randy. Thank you. Thanks. I uh, don't I think in absence of the probate judge being here, we'll go on to uh, Mr. Large. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Um, my budget is also uh, the recommended budget, the uh, fairly flat. Um, uh, I, on my requested budget, I had a, a few items on there that were just kind of wish list and, and in meeting with uh, Charlene and uh, Linda, definitely uh, understand why they're going to be looked at a little bit heavier. So uh, the biggest thing there is just some grant match monies, and that's going to be mainly for the shooting range um, grant that we're going to apply for. So everything else is pretty flat. Yes. I would uh, like to explain the increase in the full-time salaries and um, dispel or clarify the rumors flying around the building. Um, that increase is for longevity for one employee, and then it is also I am requesting to bring Nisha up to the same level of pay as the other department heads. He was hired at a lower rate, um, and was. It? So uh, he was given the chance to prove himself, and I think he has more than done that and deserves to be hired at the, to be at the same rate as the rest of the uh, department heads. So that's what that increases. Any questions? 
Thank you. That's nice. uh, airport. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioner. Um, since we have a flat budget, I have rearranged some of the line items uh, just so it reflected where I was spending the money this year. So, do you have any questions for me? Uh, any questions? I, I, I do have a, a question, if it's okay, it's off uh, the budget a little bit. Okay. Tell us about the flight status at the airport. Um, you just briefly, please. Are you talking for our emplainments? Yeah, I want, I want to. I want to. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, this year, we're online to be fairly similar to what we had last year. It was a little over 11,000 emplainments. That's people who actually get on an airplane and fly out. Um, we had some service issues at the beginning of this year that were uh, pretty serious, and we've had quite a few cancellations up to this point. Um, I gave Charlene an update a little bit earlier today. Uh, they've definitely been improving over the last month. Um, they're working to bring aircraft into our region so that they don't have uh, as many of the cancellations if something happens with one aircraft that they can reposition to uh, better address that issue. Um, our essential service contract is, is out for bid right now, so uh, we'll be hearing back on that about the 5th of June um, and reviewing if there's, you know, if we keep boutique or if there's others that want to apply for it. So that will be something certainly we will review on as it comes. Thanks. Appreciate your work and manager webs on getting that back up to speed and, and actually even the cooperation of boutique area. Because it, it, it was headed in a bad direction. It was. Thank you, sir. Mr. So um, the essential services contract that's out of the bid, um, is that, so essential services, that's federal funding, and that's the part of what helps us to have aircraft here, right? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Essential Pardon me? All of it? Essential air service, yeah. Okay. So, um, so theoretically, when the bid is open, anybody could come in and, and demonstrate that their service would be better than their current provider or something like that? Yeah, and we have our considerations as well, our staffing level. Um, we are what they consider an ARF index of A. So we don't have, you know, a lot of people on the ground as far as firefighters when the aircraft come in. Um, and so it's important to us to be able to maintain that lower level because um, we don't want to have to get new equipment and trucks and people. Right. And so, you know, yeah, other people could apply, but it's really making sure that it's a match for our community. Great. Thank you. Yes, my question. Uh, you know, we always look at the fuel sales, mm -hmm. and I always subtract the, you know, the fuel expenses uh, to get a sense of what our net is on that operation. A, is that appropriate? Am I missing something if I do that? And maybe this is for Randy, uh, not you. No, I mean, absolutely. That is. Clear, I mean, it seems really clear to me. Yeah. Right? Okay. Sure. So in the year to date, uh, our fuel sales have exceeded our fuel expenses by $220,000. Correct. Uh, presumably we'll hit 250 or so before the end of the year. Uh, and in the budget, uh, we're looking at a, a differential of about 160000 Is there a reason it's going down quite a lot? I'm going to pose that over to Linda. Sure. So uh, line 4584 is our revenue from the sales, mm -hmm. and uh, 5011 is the expenses. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, you know, without any nuance whatsoever, subtracting the expenses from the revenues and uh, looking at that as a, a sort of a gross revenue for the county. And, and in the current year, when you do that subtraction, you get 220000 so far. And I'm speculating that that gets up to 250000 easily uh, with another month and three-fourths to go. Um, well, I don't know because your fuel, uh, the fuel sales itself, it, do you, you do it monthly, correct? Correct. But sometimes that money may not come in within that same fiscal year as okay. far as when the invoice is That's the kind of nuance I was looking for. So it may be that we've already collected 11 months, not 10, and so we only have one month, not two left. Something like that? Yes. And at the beginning of this uh, fiscal year, we actually had not received um, two months' payments from the right. peak. Uh, okay. And so we kind of front loaded. So we might get 14 months' worth. Exactly. This year. Right, yeah, that's okay, exactly. That's a good that's explanation. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, did you want to cover anything at the 
detention facility or skip that? Okay. Uh, you're up then. Uh, in, in your budgets, relatively flat with the exception of a few items. Um, we did uh, increase our um, budget and increase in liability insurance. Um, historically, that's been going up uh, each year. So you'll see that increase. Um, we did increase uh, professional services um, due to some um, special projects that we've encountered this year. And it was not complete. We've bumped that line, on, line item up to um, hopefully cover those expenses. And um, that's pretty much it. Have any questions? Any questions? In addition to the ones you already had, Commissioner Brown. Yeah, that was And thank you, Charlene and Linda, for, for answering those so timely. I really appreciated all the answers. I, I, I have a question not on this budget, uh, I mean, not on the manager's department, uh, but on regional dispatch, something you and I have been to meetings about. That's not part of today's discussion, uh, but we are potentially looking at, you know, an amount of money worth talking about. Uh, are we going to discuss that at some point? So I don't know. It'd probably be an appropriate time to do that. So, um, so that nobody has numbers in front of them, but okay. No, and, and we don't know exactly what that's going to be at this point. But the, the dispatch director is looking at um, increasing the staff by two dispatchers for multiple reasons. Um, supervisors are not um, able to be supervisors. They're, they're at the console. Um, the assistant director has um, become a very high-paid dispatcher. Um, it's also something that we are continually dinged on um, for our, our, our ISO ratings for all fire departments throughout the county, including the city, is we don't have enough dispatchers according to our population and call volume. So she is requesting an increase of um, two employees, which would um, increase the contribution from the entities um, that contribute to the dispatch authority who are members of that authority. Um, we um, are looking at probably a net increase of approximately $30,000 um, in addition to what we currently budget because we put the map in there not knowing where GRT comes in. So GRT funds it, whatever the shortfall is. Currently the JPA, whatever the shortfall is, the county and the city split that 50-50. Um, you have an item on your agenda next week, which is a new revised JPA, which splits that cost out um, according fairly um, to all um, entities who utilize dispatch service and who are a member of that authority. Um, so with that said, what we currently budget to go um, to, to offset that shortfall, it would be about a $30,000 increase for us so that you would have the um, ability to um, hire those two additional people. So long way around to say that it, it's, it's critical um, dispatch has been overlooked um, for many, many years. There are many, many um, very alarming issues that need to be addressed um, as it pertains to public safety. And this being the first of, of many that we need to address. So we may see that um, level of funding stay at that, um, that level or possibly increase. But I think when it comes to public safety, that's not something that we can, can continue to ignore. So you've revised the way that it's split up between the entities to make that more fair. So the current JPA as it stands today, um, everybody has a vote, but so every entity can vote to increase their budget. However, it's the city and the county that are coming up with that shortfall. Um, not exactly fair. Um, so it's, it's actually been um, fairly well received and signed by most of the entities involved. Um, so they, they see the importance of it and that it, it doesn't need to be the city and the county funding um, the entire authority for, for all the municipalities, basically. So, so I, I realize that this could be dangerous territory, but um, do you have 
in your crystal ball an idea of what kind of funding we're talking about to fix all the problems and what kind of time frame we're looking at? Like, is it, are we looking at, you know, three or four years to get all this done, or do you know? A lot of it um, is going to, most of the equipment has been identified at its end of useful life. So what that means is there are you no know, parts to fix this equipment. Um, so depending on how long that equipment continues to outlast its useful life, that's where the crystal ball is fuzzy, but we're talking millions and millions of dollars to bring it up to par. And is there grant funding out there to help us on that? There is minimal grant funding um, that is available for that. Um, historically, there's been some FEMA funding that that can be used for communications and operability. Um, that usually is the first thing that gets pulled whenever, the, whenever there's a, a disaster. I can't talk today. A disaster, hurricanes, tornadoes, floods. That's where they pull the money Fires. to. Yes, fires. So that's what happened last year. That money was pulled to um, to deal with disasters. So, which yes, is something yes, we're no, potentially there. looking at a lot more of in the future. Yes, and we're also looking at different um, uh, Mexico Finance Authority loans, bonds, um, looking at all of those options. Um, it, it's a fairly intensive, as, as Commissioner Brown can attest, fairly intensive um, process. And we're actually trying to really explore what is um, the, the best option moving forward financially and to meet the needs of the authority. So that's something that would be covered by two old bonds? Yes, perfect. It's worth noting that none of that's going to be on the budget you're looking at. Uh, so I just yeah. wanted to have somebody. No, I know, I, I realize that. About it's that. also worth noting that the, the two additional employees are very helpful in training as well, and the current director has done an excellent job of getting dispatchers trained and certified in areas where they need to be. But if we're going to get a bunch of new equipment, as is a distinct possibility and something I think we should do, uh, there's going to need to be more training. Uh, and having the flexibility that comes with having enough full-time employees will be important for achieving that. Thanks for the information yeah. on that. Any further questions, comments? Uh, motion to adjourn. Mm -hmm. oh. Just as a further, when are we talking about revenues? I mean, we, this was all about expenses. expenses. <laughs> The revenues were budgeted um, extremely conservative. Um, that's just been our methodology. You know, Linda has the same concept as I do. Um, just can briefly go over yeah, well, the it, I mean, it's it very right now. Do we think that can increase? Yes. Uh, you know, part of the revenue equation, anyway, is the cash balance that, that we'll start with. And, uh, are you, how do you feel about that? That's also very conservative at this point. I, mean, I would agree with you. I think it's overly conservative, frankly. And that's, hard. I rarely say those words. Uh, and and, and I, I agree, it probably is overly conservative, but it's much easier for me, um, and, and Linda and I kind of have the same philosophy. It's a lot easier to be very conservative on the front end than trying to be overzealous um, with our revenues and have to go back and cut. It is. Um, so that, that's just been my philosophy. I'm, I'm open to you changing that. Okay. Yeah, no, I agree it's easier. I'm not sure it's, not be quite it's not always the most, the easy way isn't always the, the best way. Um, and this would be one of those situations, I think, where taking a, a little bit harder look at it um, would be appropriate to allow us to make spending decisions that, that are facing us with the most accurate information possible. But I, don't, I actually don't want to talk about it now if we don't have the right kind of information in front of us to, to get That's into the details. That, you know, those will be um, exact figures when we look at the final budget. We'll yeah. know um, how the fiscal year closed out, what our, what our uh, beginning cash balances are rolling over, um, yeah. how much we spent. You know, sometimes even though, you know, we look at spending, let's roughly calculate spending 90% of the budget. Most of the time we don't spend 90%, 90 to 95%. Yeah. Um, usually we don't spend that. But there could always be something that happens between now and then, and we do end up spending that. Then we're back to my overly conservative beginning cash figure. So, so that's always 
that's always something that we can't always count on exactly of what I've budgeted. I mean, it could be less because there's been times where it, we've lost about 300000 in revenue <coughs> just in PILT alone. So. so if we don't have the $2 million locked in at this point? No. They won't. The so, so they can put in their funds and put a, a preliminary budget. That's all this is. My hope is that it's also to prepare us for the fund. You get to look at look at stuff and talk about it like yeah. we have today, but realistically, that's all it is. And you'll know exactly what well everything except what you actually collect on on uh, gross receipts because those come in by from whatever's. But you have a, you you know what you did last year, so you you have a good idea. Uh, you might want to forecast your economy some. No. So, um, sorry, are you finished? Pretty close. For some reason, I thought you were not. He was probably just going to say, and you can forecast collections of property taxes, and then we'll be done. Copper, you'll know. Copper, we know already. Uh, uh, pill, yeah. SRS, all those you'll know. So the big ones, just what percentage of, uh, of uh, property taxes and what your Seats. And if you look there, that's the five big ones. I, I don't have yeah. to if I didn't. It? Yep, I did. The five big ones. Yep. Everything else is not important. So um, I have to admit that some of the stuff, you know, learning all this stuff last year was a bit of a uh, an uphill climb. But um, did we have a budget hearing like this prior to the final budget? No, 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 no. So I'd like to suggest that. Yes, we did. Like this? We have a hearing. We have one. Okay. Yeah, no, she's asking for an additional. I'm, I'm going to suggest oh, an additional? that we have another one of these hearings in early July prior to the July. Because we have to approve the final budget in the July meeting to meet the deadline, the August 1st deadline. Is that correct? Well, we could have a special meeting in there depending on. Okay, so later, if we haven't gotten, if it's not ready, we can do it. Oh, in the promise. I thought it was end of July. And then, yeah, yeah, August 1st. Okay. So, um, I would actually like to suggest that we have another one of these hearings at the time that we have, um, that before we look at the final budget, which we can have these discussions. Yeah, and at that hearing, do you want the department heads to report again, or is it mostly a work session for us? I think it's at that point, since we've heard from them now, it's mostly a work session Good. for That's us what I was to hoping. figure out how to... We should let them know. Right. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah, and then if we have any update for, you know, I mean, we could ask them if they have any changes, but Bingo. they wouldn't have to know. Well, okay. They wouldn't have to make a presentation. They wouldn't have to make a presentation. <laughs> There's a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? All right. Meeting adjourned.